And one of the members of Congress asked a question about um, Afghanistan and the, the, quote, tunnels, the camps, the, the training camps that were going on over in Afghanistan. And uh, the question was asked, is it true that we provided, that the Americans, the United States government, uh, provided the funding for the establishment of those training camps? And um, uh, the gentleman responded, uh, yes, that, you know, they were um, uh, uh, American-sponsored training camps, but that um, uh, bin Laden had abused the, you know, privileges that were given because it was a noble cause of, of getting rid of the, ejecting the Soviets from Afghanistan. Well, then I asked if the gentle person uh, who was posing the questions would yield so I could then follow on on the same vein. I que I, my question was, is it not true that the United States government paid $300 million to the bin Laden family for the construction of the military camps at that point? Then the person who was uh, testifying had no, po had no, no um, choice but to admit, yes, that the money had gone to the bin Laden family for the construction of those uh, uh, military training facilities in Afghanistan. However, he added that none of that money went to bin Laden himself. Of course, it was a joke. <laughs> So you actually held a 9-11 Citizens Commission. Uh, tell me what you learned there and why you put it together. Well, we put it together because, because it was about time somebody in Congress did. It was about time that somebody in Congress heard from the family members. And it's not just about hearing from them, but it's about critical analysis of what's done and critical questioning that will get us the answers that you and Loose Change are trying to provide to the American people. There we had family members, we had whistleblowers, we had academicians, we had scholars, we had... Um, government intelligence people, we had lawyers, we had international financial transactions uh, experts, we had citizens in the audience, just average ordinary people who were able to travel to Washington and go to the United States Congress and hear the truth about September 11th. The truth as has never been said or heard on Capitol Hill. It was all day, about eight or nine hours of testimony. And we heard from scholars like Peter Dale Scott, who talked about the relationship with the CIA, between the CIA and um, what we now call Al-Qaeda. And I have to remind you that I did pay attention when the foreign minister of Great Britain, Robin Cook, who is now dead, said that, described the, the Al-Qaeda as nothing more than the CIA's Rolodex. Um, so we had Peter Dale Scott there. We also had an attorney uh, by the name of Charles Michaels, who, Mick Michaels, who um, talked about the police state. Now, ultimately, I think that's why the 911 Truth Movement exists, because the American people have seen that this tragedy has been used by our government to redefine the character of our country, to take away the very freedoms that they say are the cause of why we were hit on September 11th. And without any real 
responses from the government as to exactly what happened. How is it that on four separate occasions on one day that a trillion dollar military and intelligence infrastructure could fail? How could that happen if for no other reason than respect for taxpayers' dollars, the Congress should have demanded an answer? The Congress didn't demand, an, didn't demand an answer and didn't get one. And in fact, quite frankly, Colin Powell, as our Secretary of State, promised to provide us a white paper on who exactly was responsible for carrying out the September 11th attacks. We never got the white paper. So we don't know who did it. And because this administration has lied so many times to the American people, then it's incumbent upon the American people to find the truth. So I admire the authors of Loose Change. I admire every individual who is um, organized in the 911 Truth Movement. I admire the members of the 911 Truth Movement because they are average, ordinary American citizens at the end of the day, just like me, who ask important questions about the fundamental character of our country, about what it is our country is becoming, how it is that we are going to define ourselves to ourselves and to our children and to the global community which we are charged to serve. We're not serving the global community. We're not serving our values and we're certainly not serving our future. Well, what makes, makes me really disappointed, and that's an understatement, is that Congress's role is oversight. And Congress, even today, you'll see members of Congress saying, well, we haven't implemented everything that the 911 Commission recommended. And the 911 Commissioners have said that the administration obstructed them, lied to them. So how can you start with a document that you know is false and, and take that to the American people as a document by which Congress's uh, accomplishments should be measured. It's circular. It's uh, a very small box. And it's not truthful. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is that thank goodness for the 911 Truth Movement. Thank goodness for loose change. Thank goodness for an inquisitive American uh, citizenry that cares enough basically to put their lives on hold so that they can get to the bottom and tell us the truth that the administration won't tell us. My um, emphasis during the time that I was in Congress, I, use the past tense. I'm in Congress now, but I will be out um, soon. Uh, at the end of the 109th Congress, will end my uh, tenure in Congress for the second time. And um, during the time that I've been in Congress every year, I've done a hearing of some sorts on COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO is the counterintelligence program that was basically authored by the United States government to quash dissent. Basically, it targeted the African American community, what they um, in the FBI called black nationalist groups. They um, didn't only target black nationalist groups. When they said black nationalists, though, let me say 
that uh, they were referring to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the SCLC, and Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. They were uh, referring to um, SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. They were referring to um, the Nation of Islam and other organizations that um, had as a focus the upliftment and the improvement in the quality of life for black people in this country. Um, but they also targeted Chicanos, uh, Puerto Rican independentistas. Um, they targeted Native Americans uh, through the American Indian Movement. They targeted um, Students for a Democratic Society, progressive white organizations. They um, targeted the general white population that might adhere to a message of social justice. 